Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do Hunter x Hunter 2011 episode 98 review. Once again, that is 98 of Hunter x Hunter. So, before I get started with the actual review itself, because the episode is actually very simple. It's like three basic parts, well, four. It's the predominant main part, which is going to Killua and what they're doing, what their plan of action is, and then and those two separating. Then we have a little scene here at the beginning with with a uh, Hagia, and him actually, him and his friends actually wind up uh, running into the palace where the king is, and it appears that at least Shalapuf has taken them under his wing, or they they've worked something out, and it appears that it it, it appears that they're gonna stay there. Then there is two small scenes with Moral and Nove and Knuckle and Shoot. And that's it. So I'll get more into detail later about those scenes. However, let me shift over. There is some semi-big news involving the anime for Hunter x Hunter. So I'll put a link to the article in the description box down below. And this news is basically, there's going to be a time slot change for the Hunter x Hunter anime. So the anime is going to shift over from the Sunday morning time to a Tuesday night time. And there isn't an exact reason as to why that is, but what we well what I can assume is that they're doing this because they want to put a lot more graphic material in the episodes, which I'm all for. I'm 100% I'm all for that. Because Sunday morning is kitty time. Sunday morning is Power Rangers. It's Teletubbies. It's Beyblade. Alright? That's, that is Sunday morning. Tuesday nights is when the men come out to play. So I figure, fuck it. Go for it. I'm all for it. I like it. I like it. So, but that's my take. It could be for a completely different reason. It's just that, as far as I know, that time slot, I'm pretty sure you could add a lot more adult material because by that time, the kitties are in bed and the men are still doing their thing. So I'm like, yeah, that's good. That's real good. And it's going to occur October 8th is going to be the exact uh, date change. So again, I'm all for it. I'm ready to go. And the article, once again, is in the description box down below on Anime News Network. So on to the episode itself, all right? Basically, the episode, so the first part, right? Hagia and Shalapuf. Shalapuf. <laughs> Basically, they're plotting shit. Hagia's plotting something. Shalapuf's plotting something. They're, they, they have plans for each other. And granted, the obvious power shift is towards Shalapuf because he's royal guard. He could probably annihilate Hyaga on the spot. On the spot. In an instant. But but Hagia, he has uses for him as well, Sha Poof. Because that's why when he was buying down, we see him look up, <laughs> smirk. And then Sha Poof is also smirking as he walks away. So, I mean, what's going to happen here exactly, we don't know. But as far as we know, we can assume that the immediate favor is going to be in, again, Sha Poof's favor. So, Hagia is probably going to do what he says until a certain point to when he can manipulate or try and sway things to his favor. Because, again, this guy is all about controlling others, but he does it in, like, a very roundabout way. Like, he's not upfront like the king of the beast would normally be. No, he's very roundabout, hidden and shit. Just, you know, that's him. So, that's number one. Number two is very simple. We have Nov and Morel. They are manipulating higher echelon individuals within the East Goturo uh, country. And there's this one guy, I forgot his name. Basically, he's going to sell out Diego. And Diego is the leader of the country. Which, by the way, the system is very uh, familiar with that of North Korea. And Diego is basically, the he is the, he is the great leader. And the thing about that is that this guy, who is like, I'm assuming a general of some kind, because we see like the badges on his chest and like the uh, medals and yada yada yada. A military guy. He's a, he's gonna give Nove and Morel the Hunter Association information about the military and the structure of the country and the quote unquote 
atrocities that Diego has done. And this kind of makes Morel mad. I mean, he, he, he doesn't say it verbally, but he's thinking about it. And Nov knows that he's thinking, and, and Nov knows that he's actually thinking about it because he's watching it. And basically, he's thinking to himself, that's bullshit because you were there with him. You were there with Diego. It's not what Diego's atrocities are. It is what our atrocities are. So that makes him fucking pissed. After this is all said and done, this military guy is going to go and live in like another country somewhere with his family. Okay, fine. Fair enough. Whatever. Uh, I mean, that's the way the world works sometimes. Sometimes, in, in order to get the job done, you got to do some underhanded shit. So, that's number two. Number three. Knuckle and shoot. Shoot, reason, logic, calm, cool, collected. Knuckle, emotions, off the handle sometimes, and he wants to just go and do shit. And... It's reasonably, it, well, it's it's understandable because it's the first day, right? And basic math. There are 5 million people in this country. They have 10 days to do this. I forgot why exactly 10 days, but it's 10 days. 500,000 people every day. They're going to be put through this process. And of those, only 5% will survive. So... That's a lot of deaths. That's a lot of deaths, people. A lot of deaths. And Knuckle, of course, he's reasonably, he's actually upset. He's visually upset about that. But Shoot's like, listen, we have to stick to the plan. Because if we fail, the end result is billions of lives lost. And I'm all for that. I'm all for that. You sacrifice the few for the many all for that and the thing about this is that i actually i actually like the contrast here because we have knuckle who is someone based on emotions and at this current point in time we have shoot who's actually based on logic who is more reasonable more rational and he's able to make a better deduction of the overall situation because of that reason so that to me it's a nice contrast between those two. So that's number three and number four. Of course, the main thing being Gon, Killua, and what they're doing right now. Killua's basically, I think Gon's just waiting for Killua. I think that's what he's doing right now. But he's being confronted by these Chimera Ants because he was sloppy in his hiding. But I think Killua is, I'm, and again, I'm not too sure about that exactly. But Killua right now, he's on a, let's call it a distraction mission. Where basically right now, he's going about taking out the humans who are being controlled by Neferpitu's net. Because there was, at the beginning of their infiltration, Gon was talking about how, well, wouldn't they need a lot of Chimera Ants so they can go through this process? And then Killua says no, because remember, they have manipulation. And by doing so, we have Neferpitu, she can control someone... Because humans have aura. Regular humans have aura and focus their aura in their fists to actually, you know, uh, contribute to the process. So, that's what he's going to do. He's going to take out those who are being controlled, thereby stalling the process. That's what he's doing right now. And, again, the 10 the day time frame, I, f I forgot why exactly, but still, regardless, uh, that's the way it is. Now, the thing here, okay? Actually, no. Wait, the ten days is I think because no, yeah, yeah. I think the ten days is because that's when um, all of them are going to be in the capital, and that's also another thing. Is right now the capital is actually located in the like bottom eastern corner of the country, and what the Chimerians are doing is that they are targeting the towns and the cities that are furthest away from the capital. And it's actually a very smart move because there are a lot of restrictions in this country. A shit ton. I mean, there was this whole talk about the informants and how if people try and leave the country, someone can, someone can tell the government they get a reward. 
the whole thing about the insurgents. If there's a coup being planned, someone can betray the coup, they'll get a reward. And there's a lot of restrictions on um, the flow of income for people when it comes to the political system of the country, when it comes to the uh, educational system of the country. There's a lot of restrictions in this country. And when they travel to this capital, apparently no cell phones allowed. So they can't really get in contact with those who are in the uh, towns furthest away from the capital if their family members are located near the capital, close to the capital. So that's why they're starting to process then. And, the, and they're also going to assume, the assumption here is that those family members will then assume that, okay, so they're traveling. We can't get in contact with them. But in actuality, it's a very good excuse for the Chimera Ants to wipe out entire towns within a night for this process. So that's how they're going about things. And Killua is going to try and stall that process. And then we see that, again, we see how it kind of works out where they we see this town and they try to cover it up. They did a real sloppy job of that. And then there was this grave. And then the entire town was there in that grave. And... You know, because they were failed because they didn't pass the process. So, that being said, Killer was going to try and stall this. And then Gon winds up being caught by these Chimera Ants. And winds up being assaulted. A strike by the Snake Guy. Gon's like, no, yes, I should you. Well, no, that's how <laughs> he didn't actually do that. But he took him out fairly easily. And then the uh, and now he's being confronted by these bat and chimera and no the the bat chimera and the owl chimera, right? And then after that, it's basically he's being followed by the chameleon guy, and that's it. So the episode rating overall, it's actually a very simple, straightforward episode. It's right there for you, it really is. And it's just laying out the process of how things are working right now. That's it. So overall, my personal opinion, I thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. So I'm done. Because, you know, like the pacing and animation are normally good. And this episode was no exception. Pacing was good. Animation, of course, good. But that being said, it was still overall okay. So, but it's very intriguing because it is nice to actually... I'll give it an okay plus because I actually do like the fact that we have this country that emulates North Korea... And the process of how these people live, or the conditions, that's the more appropriate word. The conditions by which these people live are... Appalling, I think, is a strong word, but I think it fits it. I think it fits it. I think, yeah, it's appalling. But, um, I'm done. King of Lightning, be sure, of course, rate, comment, and subscribe as always. Peace. Have a nice day.